Hi, my name's Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK, and today I wanted to talk about one of our other apps that we've got, which is called QFiling. Uh, QFiling is quite a powerful tool for specific needs that uh, you may have. It's very flexible in what you can do. Um, maybe not a lot of people have tried it, but it's very good at solving a problem, uh, very specific problems if you have them. And I'll try and go through a few examples here just so that you can see exactly what you can do with QFiling. Um, I'm running the premium version, but if I click at the top right, we can see the three versions that are available. Um, they're basically all offering the exact same functionality. It's just that the light version is limited to eight of each task. The plus does 30 and the premium can do 100. Um, so that's really the only difference between the different license versions. Um, if eight tasks is enough, then you can use the free version. Um, so if I go through all of the uh, different functions here, um, there's a lot of features down here that you can do, sort of quick modules that you can click on. Um, but to get the full picture, I'm going to click on Create a queue filing task at the top right. So hopefully you can get the idea of exactly what you can do with this. So the first thing to do is to choose a... Uh, name of a task um, and the source folders to use for this task. So you can use all the folders at once or you can pick a, spe a specific folder if you want. Um, so I've got some demo data in this marketing folder, just some QNAP presentations and images and things. So if I click the marketing folder, um, you then get a choice whether once the task has run, whether the source data is deleted or whether you keep them. So some people might use this for uh, organizing data, maybe there's a folder with just a complete mishmash of data and you can use this feature um, to uh, to sort the folders. So you maybe want to take out every single image and put it somewhere and then delete the originals that are there. So that all that's left is the next set of data that you want to sort. Um, or you can just keep the source files if you're just moving the, the data to a separate location and uh, copying it. Um, I'll keep the keep the source files option here. So if I click on next, you can name the task here as well. So if I click on next, you get to choose whether it's a one-time task, which runs immediately as soon as you've created it, or at a specific time. You can create it so that it runs on a schedule. Uh, so some people might run this task, say, every 30 days. So clear up the last month's worth of data that's been put into a location. Or you can have it real time. The second something appears on the NAS that matches the criteria, the task will uh, run uh, uh, the queue filing task so that you can uh, have it actioned immediately. Um, so I'll just say a uh, real-time task, and you can choose when it runs until. I'm going to leave that blank, so it just runs until I tell it not to. So we'll click Next, and now you get your five sections where you get to uh, choose what's happening within the rule, and you can also add a rule. So if you want uh, multiple rules to apply to a, a specific thing, you can. Um, so here I'm going to say the source file filters. So if I click here on the settings option, you get to choose. So what type of file, so you could have it on all files if you want, a specific file extension, um, anything you want. I'll choose picture for this example, so I'll say picture and then all types, so you can sort the picture by a specific camera brand. Maybe you want to sort um, every picture from your NAS from a Sony camera, to, uh, separate from a, a camera, from like say a Canon camera, you want to sort them separately, you can do that. Um, I'm just going to say all for now, and you can also create another um, rule here. So maybe you want videos to uh, happen at the same time with the, with the same rule. So you can choose to have them set up with multiple if you want. So I'm just going to leave it for pictures here. I'm going to apply that. So that's section one finished. So now I'm going to look at the file editing. So with file editing, we get a few modules here that you can use. So there's things like video transcoding, if it supports it, encryption of a file, uh, compressing them into zip files, all sorts of options. This is a handy one that I use all the time for resizing. Um, say I'm creating uh, files for a website, something like that, where all the images need to be a certain size. Say we're doing product listings on a customer's website. Um, I can make sure that every file that I'm sending is resized um, all in one go to the correct size that's needed. So you could say I want to resize those files. Uh, you can choose a set pixel amount, so 800 by 600, or you can reduce everything um, by 80%, let's say, as an example. Click Apply, so it says that. And you can add other tasks. It doesn't have to just be one. You can add a watermark to them as well if you want. So you could say watermark and put a QNAP logo there if you wanted to. So we'll save that um, so you can change everything. Um, and there's also separate sections for image to PDF if you've installed the image to PDF software convert the images um, from one uh, file. So let's say they're JPEGs at the moment, we want to convert it to something else. Uh, we can change them to whatever we want and adjust the quality as well. 
Um, so let's say convert them to PNG, just as an example. So there's three tasks. We'll click Apply. So Applied Process is three. So we can see what's happening there. You get a little summary if you click on it. Uh, destination Path. Um, so for me doing this, maybe I want to move them from the source folder of marketing. Maybe I want to put them into the multimedia folder instead. So I can click Apply on that one. Um, you can also put them in another location as well, so you can add a uh, another destination. Maybe you also want them to go to the public folder as well, so you can choose one to backup. Lots of different options. So I'll just put them in one location for now. Click Apply. Uh, now we can say the destination folder structure. So as I'm only doing pictures, I'm going to edit the criteria so that we don't create four folders here. I just want the picture folder created. So if I delete the other three and click Apply, you could also add another one if you wanted. So now it's just going to create a picture folder um, in the multimedia path that I've set. Um, you've also got some extra options down there as well. Click Apply. And then you've got the destination file handling. So this is really if there's a conflict uh, between going from the source to the destination, you know, what's the, the conflict policy that's happening? So you get to choose those as well. Um, so I'm just going to apply the default one. So now everything has an option uh, done. Everything is set. Uh, we can see that everything's okay, and then we can apply it. Um, so this is a really good way to get the data from, um, say, one location to another location. Um, examples I've had from customers is they want uh, files that are um, of a certain date um, to no longer be on the NAS. So we have one customer that really just has uh, the last three months of data uploaded into a folder. So they have a public folder that all their customers can put files in for their printing company. Um, and they want that folder to just contain the last three months and they want the NAS to automatically sort it. So every month the NAS runs a task that anything older than three months gets deleted. Um, gets or You could set it instead of deleting it, it gets moved to another location, a long-term archive if you wanted to. So there's a lot of options that you can do uh, within it. There's lots of recipes you can use. So depending on what you want to do, you can create your own recipes and save them. So there's um, an example here with one. Uh, you could save it as a new recipe. So let's say uh, the photographer one, there we go, uh, camera model equal to Canon. Perhaps you wanted to change that uh, to something else and you can then save it as a new recipe uh, that you can edit. Um, so you can use these as bases for your own recipes of, of functions that you want to do. If we go into document manager, we can see here um, document author equal to QNAP. Um, there's no file editing really being done on them. Uh, you can choose what the destination path is, um, different structures or so different conditions, um, and what the uh, conflict policy will be. So there's a few recipes already there, but you can create your own ones if you want to. So here you can create it. You can name it so that you can reference it later if you need to. Um, but Judging by the uh, the license here, you can have eight recipes created as a custom that you can create. You could have eight real-time tasks, as well as eight scheduled tasks, as well as eight one-time tasks. So there's quite a powerful piece of software, especially uh, even without the license. So if, you, if that's enough uh, tasks for you, there's really no need. But just as a quick summary, we've got light, plus, and premium. Um, and we've got uh, the same functionality on all. Uh, the only difference is how many tasks you can have running at the same time um, and how many recipes that you can have. Uh, so you can go back to the overview. We can see we've got two real-time tasks. The task list shows all your different tasks. So you've got different tabs for one-time tasks, schedules, or real-times. Uh, so you can see everything there. But it is quite powerful, and you can really customize the results to really anything you like. It's a bit like the uh, IFTT, the if this, uh, then that sort of um, uh, setup. So if the file matches this, then do this with it. So it's really, really quite powerful and very, very customizable to however you want. Um, if anybody does have any questions on QFiling, uh, please do let us know. Um, it is It does work in conjunction with things like QSearch as well. So if you have a certain search result, you can have QFiling uh, run a search using QSearch and any of the results from that search uh, can then be applied to a QFiling task as well. Uh, so yeah, if anybody has any questions, please do let us know in the comments box uh, down below. We are pretty quick to reply, so hopefully we can get back to you soon. All right, thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.